What would be a good headline for today? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, don't give up on the world. These clients, we see them every day. They are anxious. You know, it's, it's normal to be fearful of, of things. It's also a little bit too easy to be afraid of everything. You know, when we think about the situation in Europe, I think it's good to make this you know, medical analogy where we see uh, Europe as an economic patient. Hashtag economic patient, yeah. He got into a very severe health condition 10 years ago. He got in hospital, he got a heart surgery, so he had 10 years of uh, you know, strong medication. There's the general impression that the patient is doing horrifically bad and that he needs more medication, but it's actually the contrary that's happening. He's not doing perfectly well. It's not like he's gonna run the marathon tomorrow, but for now, the patient seems sufficiently okay. Stabilized? Stabilized. There's always this impression that Europe is the problem child of the world economy. But we have the lowest level of unemployment since, since the crisis. You know, it's not about being optimistic or pessimistic. I think it's about being realistic. Yes, growth is slow, but I would say this is a fact of life. We're no longer in the days where growth can be around 3 or 4 percent. Well, not in the 50s, 60s or 70s anymore, right? The answer of slow growth is reduced inequalities. I think everyone agrees on the diagnosis, basically, and on the solution through the question of implementation. And the countries where we have the biggest income and social inequality are the Anglo-Saxon economies. The only way we found to make that slow growth more inclusive is higher taxes. And who have the Americans voted for? Donald Trump, who reduces taxes. It's funny because in the US, it hasn't always been that way. The US used to be known and recognized for the fact that they've built this very strong middle class. The marginal tax rate in the US was above 60 in the 70s. Now it's below 30, you know? So there's no magic. If you're a, a British politician or a European, continental European politician and you say my program is to increase taxes so that I can uh, ensure that its slow growth is more inclusive, I'm not sure you'll be elected. Countries that are the most stable are the ones who do this redistribution the, the, in, in the best way. Denmark, Norway, Sweden, but also Switzerland. And if you take the example of Japan, they've been in a slow growth environment for 30 years. They are very frustrated with slow growth as well, but nonetheless, politically speaking, the country was stable. And the only reason why it's because their slow growth is more inclusive. And it should actually be taken as an example for what's coming ahead in our world. There are ways you can, at the margin, improve that level of activity. You know, you can improve education, investments, infrastructure. You will find companies that in a very sustainable way manage to, to navigate and benefit from these lower levels of activity. Probably it will also be more sustainable for the resources and the planet going forward. It takes a lot of time and indeed a lot of rethink for, um, for people to understand that this is an environment where uh, you know, people who take the right decisions, who do the right things in a sustainable way, actually manage to prosper.